Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, as always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Subscribe to our email list there. Uh, simply with an email, uh, you'll get access to a free PDF. It's 31 pages on the top 200 drugs, some of the most important things that I've seen in clinical practice, uh, as well as things that will likely show up on uh, pharmacology and board exams. So uh, great opportunity for students as well as those uh, just looking to refresh their medication education uh, in practice. All right, the drug of the day today is guanfacine. Uh, brand name of this medication is 10X. Uh, other brand name medication you might see is Intiniv. Uh, this drug uh, its mechanism of action is an alpha 2A receptor agonist, and it primarily works um, in the uh, central nervous system, uh, and it reduces sympathetic outflow. So remember, uh, when you hear sympathetic, that means uh, the fight or flight response, right? Where we got an increase in blood pressure, uh, heart rate, things of, of that nature. So this drug is going to reduce that, and it does it by uh, ultimately kind of reducing the effects of norepinephrine. So that's going to lead to uh, a reduction in vasoconstriction, which could lead to lower blood pressure, uh, and also a reduction in heart rate. So as you could imagine... Uh, this medication with its mechanism of action is very similar to clonidine, which I believe I have covered in the past. So if you want to listen to that, go uh, check out that previous episode at the website, reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, mechanistically, uh, in ADHD, which this medication is probably where I've seen it used the most, uh, that binding of alpha-2A receptors in the pre frontal cortex uh, is thought to uh, kind of improve that behavioral inhibition uh, in ADHD. Uh, mechani mechanistically, it's not very well studied, in, in my opinion, um, with regard to how it works in ADHD, but it has been shown uh, to, to be effective there to some extent. So uses, hypertension, I mentioned, uh, and then ADHD, of course. Uh, this is not a first-line medication for either of these diagnoses, as you could imagine, because you probably don't see it very often either. Um, but focusing on ADHD, where you might see this medication, uh, is, is if you've got somebody that doesn't want a controlled substance. Uh, so, you know, the stimulant medications like methylphenidate, for example, um, and kind of associated with that if there's a concern for drug diversion. Uh, so guanfacine may be a consideration there. Uh, another consideration where it may be advantageous to use guanfacine versus other ADHD medication uh, is if patients have tics or uh, Tourette's syndrome in association uh, with their ADHD. Uh, dosing, let's chat about that a little bit. So um, in pediatrics, we're going to be following weight-based dosing, which is pretty common. Um, I'm not going to list out all the individual weights and, and doses. I think that's import not, not important to have that detail. Uh, if you need that information, definitely go look it up with the drug. Uh, there is an IR formulation, so an immediate release formulation, and an extended release formulation. Um, extended release formulation is a little bit more expensive, at least in, in my experience. Um the downside of obviously the immediate release formulation is you got to dose it multiple times per day. So that's the, the big issue there. All right, let's talk adverse effects a little bit. So I alluded to a couple of the effects that can happen um, when you know the mechanism of action. So again, reducing that kind of fight or flight response, the sympathetic outflow, uh, that can reduce pulse. Uh, that can reduce blood pressure as well, which you know, obviously reducing blood pressure is a good thing if we're actually you know, managing hypertension. Um, but again, this drug is so seldom used for, for hypertension um, because of adverse effects and lots of other agents that are, are much, much better. Uh, other adverse effects that kind of associated 
um, with low pulse, low blood pressure, so AV block um, has been reported, certainly syncope, dizziness, um, reducing uh, that sympathetic nervous system action. Obviously, we can cause some sedation and drowsiness. Um, there's also other rare reports of other central nervous system changes as well. Uh, dry mouth is something that, that has been reported to a significant extent, so that can be kind of a bothersome nuisance symptom. Um, I always pay attention to patients who are uh, taking you know, biotin or any type of saliva substitutes. Um, that definitely reminds me to go look at their medication list and say, hey, what medications are they taking? That's um, causing a significant enough problem that they, they feel like they need to treat their dry mouth. So um, just a little kind of polypharmacy prescribing uh, cascade pearl there uh, to pay attention to those saliva substitute type medications in identifying dry mouth as a potential adverse effect. Uh, there's also been uh, impotence and some sexual uh, side effects that, that have been reported as well there. Uh, kinetics. So CYP3A4 metabolism uh, is important uh, as well as um, this drug is significantly uh, eliminated in the urine as well. So it's you know fairly close to a 50-50 split. Um, so naturally, when we talk about drug interactions, which I will coming up here, uh, that's that's going to be important with the uh, liver metabolism there. Some differentiating factors with kinetics. Uh, so the immediate release, uh, that time to peak is 2.6 hours. The time to peak for the extended release is on average five hours. So I think that, you know, let you know that it's a little bit smoother peak with that extended release, which is you know virtually true in in all the cases and why uh, extended release formulations can be advantageous. Uh, also, I wanted to mention bioavailability. Um, the extended release formulation is significantly less bioavailable than the immediate release formulation. So what does that mean in practice? Uh, basically, don't do a one-to-one -one switchover um, is what that tells me. Or at least if you're going to consider that, you better recognize that depending upon which one you're switching to, you're going to give more or less of a dose um, than you might think you're giving. So um, that bioavailability figure is really, really important. So uh, immediate release, approximately 80% bioavailability. And... Um, the extended release is in the range of uh, 50 to 70 percent bioavailability. Um, so that's really, really important to recognize uh, that less of that extended release um, product uh, is going to get absorbed. And so on a milligram per milligram basis, you're definitely going to be off if you give the same milligram dose of immediate release uh, compared to the same milligram dose of extended release. It's going to give you different concentrations, different levels, and ultimately um, could potentially lead to a different uh, clinical effect or clinical outcome there. Uh, important, important patient education point uh, in regards to managing uh, ADHD particularly. This medication takes a while to work, so the stimulants tend to work a lot more quickly. Uh, when it comes to ADHD symptoms, um, guanfacine does tend to take definitely uh, a couple of weeks, maybe even longer in some situations um, for that benefit to start to show up. So uh, patients can get impatient. Uh, they take it for three days, four days, five days, not noticing any difference. Um, that's definitely likely to happen. And it's a really, really important patient education point um, to recognize that we need to take this medication for a period of time uh, for it to start working, you know, similar to um, SSRIs in depression, for example. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor, and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification study material, like BCPS, ambulatory care, NAPLEX, or others, go check out meded101.com store. We've got a growing list of resources there, updated annually, 
uh, lots of testimonials from folks who've used our content in the past. Uh, so lots of good stuff there where you can help support uh, the Real Life Pharmacology podcast as well. Uh, if you're into other things, uh, we've got books for uh, nursing pharmacology. We've got uh, flashcards for anyone taking pharmacology courses. Uh, lots of different links, lots of opportunities for you to help educate yourself um, and uh, just be better at uh, managing medications or uh, helping patients work with medications. So again, all those links, resources uh, can be found at meded101.com slash store. All right, wrapping up with drug interactions. So first and foremost, I think about uh, the additive effects. So it does have, uh, guanfacine does have some CNS depressant type activity. So naturally any medications, uh, you know, sleepers, opioids, alcohol that have sedative properties can have an additive effect and, and really zonk people out. Uh, lower blood pressure, lower pulse. So if we've got other medications that are um, on board that can have these effects, um, guanfacine, adding that, starting that, increasing that will increase those effects potentially. Uh, and then we've got to mention CYP3A4. I alluded to it that it is um, significantly metabolized by CYP3A4. Uh, so drug interactions are going to be there um, with this medication. Kind of a, a classic um, kind of drug food interaction with CYP3A4 is grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice inhibits CYP3A4, uh, that's likely to increase concentrations of guanfacine and ultimately the effects of the medication as well. Uh, on the flip side, we've got lots of CYP3A4 inducers as well. Uh, you know, cyclobenzaprine, for example, rifampin's got some activity there. Um, plenty of those medications too. Uh, inducers are going to lower concentrations of guanfacine and increase the likelihood of uh, treatment failure and or uh, inadequate concentrations. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Hopefully you picked up some practice pearls on guanfacine. Uh, if you did, do us a huge favor, leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. We've got crossword puzzle books. We've got uh, polypharmacy case studies. We've got drug interaction stuff. Um, lots of educational tools there for anyone uh, working with medications in a healthcare profession. So uh, go check out all those links, meded101.com slash store. Uh, support the sponsor there. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me, uh, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP on LinkedIn. Uh, otherwise, you can email me directly to at mededucation101 at gmail.com. With that, I'm going to sign off for today. I thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.